Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with another project update video for this 1-6 scale ArmorTech radio controlled early production German Tiger 1. Since the last video update a lot of progress has been made to the tanks turret side detailing as well as to the roof itself. We'll be going over all these details and additions in this video. To start with the video here we have the turret going through its bodywork phase. Since the last video was filmed, the holes which were present on the side of the turret have been completely plugged up and deleted, being blended into the side portion of the turret. These would include the original kit supplied holes for the mounting fasteners, which of course connect the turret sides to the bottom plate, as well as the original kit supplied lugs for mounting on the roof, and of course my magnet locking system which goes ahead and mounts again to the inside portion of the turret and allows you to click the roof into place without any fasteners required. Furthermore of course during the assembly phase there were some tool marks that I mentioned before and these two have been addressed at this point here. The bodywork now is running towards its end and from here I can now start adding on the details on the sides as well as also the sculpted well beads. Now before I can go ahead and add on the welds, the one area I'm going to focus on are these two sections over here. If we recall from the last video, these sections are connected to the plate that gets mounted to the front portion of the turret, and this is what partially holds up the mantlet equipment on the inside. Now just like I said in the other video, the piece itself is nicely done and nicely engineered. The one bit of modification I am going to do however are to these two sections over here. The same modification is also being done on the opposite side. The piece itself is correctly shaped, however one of the geometry differences between this and the real Tiger is that on the real Tiger we have these stereotypical little plates that are found on this section here of the front. Now on the real vehicle, just like on the model one here, these are for the internal plates which hold up the mantlet, just like it is on the Armortech. But the difference is that with the geometry of the shape of the turret, these plates, both on the top and bottom, are actually running parallel with the side here of the vehicle. While on the Armor Tech kit here, the plates actually are running perpendicular. I'm going to change the camera angle so you get a better idea of what I'm referring to. Looking from the top down here, you get to see in more detail what I'm referring to. If we follow this line here of the outside of the turret, it runs in this manner. However, you'll notice that the edge here of the plate is totally squared off. Because of that, you'll have this weird flattened area on this section on the plate. Now, like I was mentioning earlier, on the real Tiger 1, this angle here was actually mirroring the side angle here of the plate, of, of the armor on the side of the turret. Now, to do the modification, I am going to have to remove some material off of these sections over here, squaring it off. Once these sections are squared off, I can then add two plastic sections, which will give you the look and, and feel of the detail plate, and will also blend in better with the model surface. And here's the turret back on its side view, and you can see the areas marked with a sharpie that need to be ground away. Now, this is one of those procedures where if you do not have the tools or even the skill set in how to use this equipment, do not undergo this modification. This is something that is really a experienced level mod and is one that should be only done if, again, one has the, the prerequisites in equipment and experience. If someone is a casual builder and is building one of these Tiger ones and runs across this setup, it's better to leave it stock as is than to try to middle with it without having the know-how like I just mentioned. Now for the tooling that I'm going to be utilizing, I'm going to be using a angle grinder. The angle grinder is going to make short work of the aluminum here into getting as flat as possible to the side of the hull, or I should say the side of the turret. Now you can also utilize a Dremel with one of those fiberglass cutting stones that is definitely doable, but you have to keep in mind that this will put extensive wear and tear on the Dremel. The Dremel, however, can still, can still be utilized for the same job, and if you are not as, shall I say, precise with one of these larger devices, the Dremel is going to be a lot more 
easily managed when it comes time to squaring everything off. Another tool I'll be utilizing to help square it down any some further is going to be this little device here. This device here is called the Black & Decker Power File. This is an older tool. I've had this for a number of years now and it's basically a miniature handheld belt sander. The belt is basically the same width as one of those Dremel sanding drums which are supplied with the sets. I'm not sure if these are even still in production but I'm pretty sure there are contemporary units out there which utilize the same type of belt and do the same job. Now the point of all the tooling that I mentioned has to remove as much material from these two lugs over here so that they are as flush with the side of the turret as one can possibly be. Because of the way they are shaped it is not going to be salvageable in just polishing and removing the cutting off the edges because of the way the section over here intersects with the side of the turret you're just not going to have the broad area match the angle found on the turret side so they need to be completely not deleted but just sand down as far as they can go Once the grinding is completed, the pieces now look like this. Now this one here, I made a little bit of contact with the side of the turret, a little bit more so than I wanted to, but it's not a big deal and this will be solved with some glazing and spot putty. But this is at the point now where I can go ahead and do some more body work just to blend and smooth everything in. At that point there, you'll notice that the sides of the lugs are now totally flush with the side portion here of the turret. It is at that point when I can start adding the detail face plates. And here we can see the modification now fully completed. Where the original kit components were ground away, I went ahead and plated it over with these sections of sheet styrene. Once the styrene were added, I just added the sculpted wall beads, which then completed the look. Now with both the top and the bottom units, some bodywork was added to the location where the plastic makes contact with the hull so that it, everything has a nice seamless look to it. However, on the top one here, in addition to the putty work, I also add the small little notch as this would be present on the real piece. And if you notice, now it blends in better with the remainder of the turret's side appearance. And of course, while on the welds, the welds were also sculpted on the lift lugs that we have here. Again, it's also a mirror image on the opposite side. Now, while I'm wrapping up the side body work on the turret, I can now focus on the side turret detailing. The kit supplies you with the following components that we have here. These would include the side turret visors, the pistol port, and also the large escape hatch. Now, being an early production Tiger I, this vehicle would feature the largest escape hatch as opposed to on the initial production Tigers, which would feature two pistol ports. Also, on the flip side, if this was a later production Tiger, the pistol port would not be present in this shape over here and would either be completely deleted, as what is found on some later versions of the Tiger, or it would be much smaller in shape as it was a little plug type system. However, that information, of course, is for really another topic and another video. For the model that we have here, all the components are shown. Starting with the turret side visors, the kit supplies you with two visors that are made from CNC aluminum. The pieces themselves are actually very nicely rendered and are going to be used primarily out of box. The only mods that are going to be needed are some sculpted well beads around the sections where the visor makes contact with the turret side. One nice feature that these components have is that they have the correct orientation where the vision slit goes. On the Tiger One, a lot of people think that the turret vision slit is directly in the center. However, in real life, the vision slit is actually slightly below the center line, and this is present on the Armor Tech kit. Next up is the pistol port. This component here is comprised of a single CNC aluminum turning, and its design has been left unchanged since the first generation of the Armortech Tiger One kit. 
The piece geometry and shape wise is perfectly fine. Even the little indent for where the pistol port hatch would be is also nicely rendered. All the holes for the fasteners are present and on this kit here the kit wants you to recycle the cone fasteners which were also utilized on the gun mantlet which I mentioned in a previous video. However on this piece here I'm going to go over a little different way that I'm going to be doing these fasteners. Last up is the escape hatch. The escape hatch is comprised of three components. We have the hinge, the hatch itself, and also a hardened steel pin to obviously act as the pivot. Now the hinge and the hatch are made from a single piece of CNC aluminum and this piece here is evolved from the earlier renditions of the kit which would originally been made from a cast white metal alloy. The hinge work is very simplistic in nature, but it is more than adequate for the job at hand. It does have its correct geometry and shape, and the little recessed wells for the fasteners are also present. On the hatch, the exterior portion has a basic hinge that is integrally CNC into the piece. It does have the overall correct shape and size with its scallops. However, a little hand tweaking is going to be done to it, which I'll go over in a little bit. On the interior portion of the hatch, it is void of any sort of detailing whatsoever and just a basic smooth slab side appearance. Similar what was also seen on the original kit supplied bow hatches. Another bit of detailing that I'm adding at this point in the build are the rear turret air intake vent. Now the stock Armortech kit supplies you with this unit that we have here and this unit here is actually very adequately rendered it has the correct size and shape as well as also the detailing now this unit is evolved from their earlier renditions which basically follow the same format with the type of tooling but it's they're a little bit more simplified compared to this unit over here in fact on the other ones I believe they were about three pieces that all assembled together to form the shape of the vent while this one here it's a single CNC turning. However as nice as it is it's not going to be utilized on this build I'm going to be replacing it with this resin one here. The reason has to do with the units that we have here are actually rendered if the tank was going through its snorkeling mode. This is actually a common I wouldn't say mistake, but a common feature found on many smaller scale and even larger scale Tiger 1s. This unit that we have here is actually a cover cap that would encapsulate this air vent. This again has to do with the fact that the Tiger 1s originally had the ability to wade and snorkel. One of the procedures that would be done before the tank can go ahead and start the forwarding operation is to seal up several of the locations where water can enter inside of the vehicle. I've covered many of those other locations in earlier videos, but for the turret, one of them would be the air vent. Now, in order to encapsulate the air vent, they have this cover with this star pattern, and on these sections over here would be threaded bolts with wing nuts. These would actually clasp onto this ledge that if we notice actually is elevated from the turret's roof. By tightening these little wing nuts you would actually secure this cap in place and this would ensure that no water can back up and enter inside of the turret hatch via the vent. Now when the vehicle would finish its forwarding one of the first steps into getting the tank bow ready would be to remove the cover cap off of the air vent. The air vent is absolutely important on this vehicle as well as on most tanks for that manner. The reason, of course, is that if the tank is all buttoned up and the tank is in combat, you need to have fresh air going into the turret because of the poisonous gases which are emitted from the main gun. When the main gun fires, the shell gets ejected, and many of the fumes from left over from the burnt propellant can enter inside of the vehicle, as well as also, once the breach is open, you can have a lot of the fumes from the barrel and chamber area flow into the vehicle as well. These fumes are very toxic, and so the fresh air is absolutely required in order to keep the crew in good shape. Now, the reason why you do see this cover cap found on most models is, well, the piece itself is nicely detailed. It looks interesting, it has this unique star pattern to it has a little handle that we have here and generally are aesthetically pleasing however unless the tank is being rendered to go 
into its forwarding operation, the piece should have this unit here. Now, the unit that we have here is a recent set from EastCoastArmory.com. It consists of two pieces. We have here the top cover, and we also have here the bottom base. The unit, once assembled, will then just get mounted directly in place where the original kit-supplied metal unit would go. From the pistol port, this now brings us to the tank's escape hatch. Now, the escape hatch is going to require a little bit more modifications compared to the pistol port, which really more or less just involved me swapping out the fasteners for the new pointed ones like I mentioned before. Now, on the, on the escape hatch, here we have the stock unit and is fully assembled. Like I said before, it was a very simple component to build out of the box. Now, if you notice, it has its exterior detailing, but its interior detailing is totally flat. There's no interior detailing found on this hatch in any way, shape, or form. Now, what I went ahead and did was I sat in, in CAD, and I went ahead and created this component that we have here. This set here is a detail insert for the stock Armor Tech kits. Specifically, this set here is for the Armor Tech kits which come with the CNC style hatch. This would be for any Armor Tech Tiger 1, which came after the 2005 time frame. Uh, the real difference is because on the first two releases of the Armor Tech Tiger 1, this hatch here was made from that cast white metal alloy, and if we can recall from the last video I did, it was hollow on the inside portion here, unlike the solid CNC unit. Now, this 3D printed component here will soon be added to the ECA prop line, but it's going to change somewhat from the condition that we have here. This one here is more or less a pre-production prototype, and after seeing this one, I see some areas to improve upon. Basically, what this does is that this drops directly into place and gives you the absent detailing, which would have been originally found on the hatch's interior section. Now the piece is designed to be bolted to the hatch via these two sections over here. You, with Allen bolts, you go ahead and you have to first drill and tap the escape hatch, and then you can just thread the unit directly into place. Adhesives alone could work, but it's really best left with adhesive, or I should say with fasteners, as the adhesives after a while, specifically with the way the hatch clunks around a lot, can possibly loosen up over time and your face can pop off. Less than ideal, of course. Now here we have on the pre-production sample, we have all the detailing integrally printed, which is the draw bar, which on the real unit would slide up and down. And then we have these two little levers over here, which are used to tighten the unit in place. Now the reason why this is a pre-production sample is that I originally intended for the piece to be printed and everything to be fully functional in one printing, however that doesn't seem to be the case. So I'm going to be modifying the actual production units where the center section here will be a separate printing that will be inserted by the builder. But of course more information on this will be seen on the ECA website once these pieces are made available. However, with this format you can see just how easy the installation is first snip these guys off, or in my case just twist them off, remove these two little pegs, I can then, once the piece is bolted in place, you can then delete the fastener locations with a little bit of bodywork, and, and voila, your hatch is now complete with its interior detailing. Now with the shape of the interior section here, this is designed to fit onto the armor tech turret without any modifications need to be made to the turret itself. And here's the escape hatch, now fully completed and is about to head off into paint as well as eventually installation. Now the stock armor tech hatch has the ECA printed detail insert now affixed. The method is with both adhesives as well as also the two fasteners that I mentioned earlier. Now in order to install the fasteners, remember the stock armor tech piece is flush and it's solid CNC aluminum and so modifications do have to be made for the addition of these fasteners by the builder. The way this is done is that first the unit is glued permanently in place. Once the unit is affixed via the adhesives, this gives me the ability to drill out the two sections of the aluminum and then eventually tap the sections. Of course, for the drilling, this is done with a drill press. You want a nice straight hole drilled into the material and you want to have the depth, the depth set so you don't over penetrate and drill through the hatch. Once the hole was drilled, I then with a tap go ahead and cut the threads which then allows me to add the fasteners. Now the fasteners have been completely concealed with the bodywork and are nice and flush and will be unnoticeable once the unit is in paint. 
Now moving towards the exterior portion of the hatch, modifications have been made as well. Starting with the most noticeable, which are the scallop cuts. From my information, the early production Tiger featured these cuts found on the rear escape hatch. And these were added via a Dremel and everything was then sanded away with some sandpaper. And if you notice, I also threw some putty on there just to make sure no tooling marks were remaining. Another modification was made was actually to the hinge. Now if we can recall the hinge was squared off in its appearance and on the real Tiger 1 they would have featured these two little small little angled cuts in these two sections over here. These angled sections were added with a file and after a few passes the piece had its correct shape completed. The only other modification I made to the exterior was the addition of some weld beads found in this location here which again is present on the real tank. Now, the last bit is the addition of this little spacer plate that I have here on the hinge. The spacer plate is needed for the model as from when I tried dry fitting it to the model, it was having difficulty in fitting in place and the spacer plate was an addition that I needed to add. It's also important to add that the real Tiger 1 does have a spacer just like this one in its place, so it's basically the best of both worlds. One final mod I made was the addition of the small little hole that we have here. On the real Tiger 1, this hole is present on the hinge, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it is for a roll pin or possibly for lubrication to make to keep the hatch opening in a nice smooth manner. And here's the visor now mounted to the model. Like I said before, the visor just simply plugs directly into the pre-drilled hole that is found on the turret sides. Sculpted weld beads were added just to finish the look. From the weld beads on the visor takes us to the weld beads here found on the side section. This is one little bit of detailing that is a stigma on the Tiger 1 design. On the real vehicle, the way the turret sides wrap around the bottom pan, you do have this little seam over here where the Germans go ahead and weld everything up. Now on the Armor Tech kit, the way the turret is shaped, the seam lines are just not present. Because of this, you're going to have to do some calculations on where exactly the seam lines would be present and in order to add the sculpted weld beads. This is a mirror image on the opposite side. Now while on the topic of the weld beads for this section over here, the weld beads continue underneath the turret casing as again it covers up the seam line which is present from where the side meets the bottom pan and this seam line and or I should say these welds, are also present on the real Tiger 1. Again, it's a mirror image on the reverse side of the model. Moving from the visor now brings us to the pistol port. Now the pistol port has been permanently affixed to the model and has also been redetailed. Now like I mentioned before, the kit wants you to recycle the fasteners for the mantlet to be utilized for the detailing that we have here. Now although the fasteners that are supplied for the mantlet and the sprocket hubs are absolutely perfect for that role, for the pistol port it's really less so. The reason why is because on the pistol port the conical fasteners were a lot smaller compared to the ones found on the mantlet and also did not have any wrench type slits on them. The fasteners for the pistol port were completely conical in shape and that is what we have here. Now these pieces here are actually a 3D printed drop in replacement from EastCoastArmory.com. They are sold on the catalog and are and supplied in a set where one set is enough to, to equip one whole pistol port. Now also you'll notice the orientation of the pistol port where we have the little hatch that we have here and this is pointing towards the front of the vehicle. This is the correct orientation to keep in mind when installing these pieces to the model because there is no key and groove system and you can easily install this piece in reverse. Moving further back takes us to the rear lift lug. It has now been mounted to the model permanently. You'll notice the ECA lift lug mount that has also been sandwiched in place. And the sculpted well beads were added just to complete the look and detailing. The piece is still assembled as per the kit where it threads into a metal block on the inside and that's what holds and secures the piece to the vehicle. So actually a very strong point. In fact, this is the way I recommend when it comes time to actually lifting the turret is by using the lift lug here as an actual lifting point. However, more information on that is to follow once I have the rear bustle bin. 
Moving from the lift lug now brings us to the escape hatch, and here we have the escape hatch now fully completed and mounted to the model. The escape hatch is in its coat of primer, and on the inside it's also been painted and weathered as well. While on the outside you can see how the scallops now are fully rendered, and you can notice that the bodywork was successful in deleting all sorts of the tooling marks that I was mentioning before. While on the hinge you'll notice that there are three hex head fasteners. This is changed from the kit as the kit wants you to use Allen cap screws for this installation. On the real Tiger one, however, they were hex bolts like we see here. This was a very simple replacement. I just simply swapped out the kit supply fasteners for the hex bolts. The hatch is fully functional, of course, and you can see the detailing now that is present on the inside portion of the hatch. While on the inside portion, you can notice that the areas where the fasteners were present in order to affix this section to the metal hatch have been completely deleted and blended away. While on the interior detailing, you can see the little O-ring detailing has now been painted, as well as the other weathering has been added as well. Now one nice thing about this hatch that I notice is that the hatch does have a lot of friction with the hinge which is a very good thing in regards to the Tiger One escape hatch. Because of the size and shape of these hatches there's a lot of mass above the hinge point and it is very common to have these pieces flop open on you if the tank is in motion or even if it's just a static type display. With the way Armortech designed this hinge, the tolerances are very, very, very tight. So that when you're doing your hand fitting, you don't have to remove a whole lot of material on these two sections over here in order to get the hinge to open. Now again, if you machine or file away more material than is required, the hinge will loosen up and this will cause some problems. So again, care needs to be exhibited by the builder, so you just remove just the right amount so that the hinge can interlock with each other in a smooth way but are nice and snug so that the hatch doesn't flop open on you. As you can see I can just even pivot the hatch in a halfway pose and the hatch the weight of the hatch is not going to clunk the unit over. Now the unit the, even though the locking mechanism detailing is present it is just for show and there's nothing locking this guy in place. Now to open up the hatch, you just simply grab onto the side, either one or the other, and you just lift down, and the hatch will open. And to close it up again, you just simply push up, and just pops back in place. Now before I go ahead and depart from the hatch, one more little bit of information I want to give to any of the viewers, and also to anyone who's building one of these Armortech Tiger ones, has to do when it comes time for the mounting of the hatch, you have to be aware of the orientation. And what I mean by that is because the turret is a rounded surface, there is no flat that is machined into the surface for the mounting of the hatch. So you're going to be mounting a flat section to a curved location. Why this is relevant has to do when it comes time to actually fasten the unit in place. If you either start with this bolt here or this bolt over here, you're going to tighten it and what's going to happen is that the hatch is going to go and pivot on you to the fastener that you have tightened the most. This will lead to the hatch being mounted in a cockeyed manner and you will have a big gap and seam either on this side or on this side of the hatch depending on which fastener you tightened. Because of this, you want to tighten both of those fasteners in a nice, even manner. Therefore, you get the hatch mounted in a straight parallel format as possible. And here you can see what it looks like on the opposite side with the hatch pivoted out of the way, so you get to see the actual fasteners. Now, like I said before, the fasteners were replaced with M4 hex bolts compared to the original M4 cap screws that were supplied with the kit. Well in addition to replacing those fasteners I also went ahead and added some washers and lock washers to these three locations. This gives more strength and gripping onto the side portion of the turret and it keeps the hatch in a nice strong secure mounted manner. Now one can clearly see with the way the, this kit is designed you're going to need to position a tool to get into this little cavity over here in order to secure the fasteners. This is different from the earlier versions of the Tiger where those versions had an all cast 
turret side and bottom. And so the holes were just simply drilled and tapped directly into the side. So no other tooling was really required. On these ones here, you're going to need to use a very small wrench, like this one I have here, in order to get into these very tight confines and recesses in order to secure the fasteners in place. It's not impossible, but I will say I recommend getting one of these small little wrenches because this will make the job a hell of a lot more easier. Now along with the turret sides, the turret roof is also being worked on. In the last video, I mentioned the modification of the magnet locking system to help secure the roof to the sides of the turret without the use of fasteners. Well, here you can see that the bodywork has been completed on all of the fastener locations for both the kit original countersunk fasteners as well as the new holes that I made for securing onto the magnetic plates. Now, another thing that I noticed on this particular build had to do with this section over here. I'm going to get the camera around so you get to see this in more detail. Now, shortly after the magnet locking system was completed and I was able to mount the top of the turret roof to the sides, I noticed there was a larger gap on this section over here compared to the one found on the opposite side. As for why this is the case, it's hard to say. Possibly the sides of the turret are slightly out of spec or possibly the turret roof is slightly out of spec. Either way, there was a slight gap on this section over here. This was an easy fix, however, I just built it up with a strip of eighth inch thick plastic square and once the plastic square was mounted to the metal I went ahead and just did some fine hand fitting to remove just the right amount of material so that the piece can still pop off of the vehicle but it is the large gap is now mostly removed now there is a slight gap in this section over here Keep in mind, once the sculpted weld beads gets added, all of these gaps are going to be completely removed and no trace of them are going to be remaining. Now, in addition to securing and hand fitting the plastic sections on the turret, I also have to do a little bit of body work to, again, ensure that the turret roof is seamless and you, there's no noticeable transition from the metal to the small little plastic shim that I just mentioned before. Another modification that I made to the roof are these little divots that we have here towards the center. Now, these divots are found on all renditions of the Tiger One from the initial production all the way up to the final production units, specifically the ones with the thicker turret roof. These divots are actually flush fitting fasteners found on the real vehicles and the purpose of them have to do with securing equipment on the inside portion of the turret. They are always found in this type of a format where you have four on the downward slope section towards the front of the turret and the other four are on the rear section's flat half. To add this detailing, I first mark out where their locations are going to be. I drill the sections out via the drill press and the divots themselves are turned from pieces of resin. They are machined to be little plugs that have the correct width that once added to the stock ArmorTech roof, just a slight portion of them are below the surface, giving you the look of the real units. Now these flush fitting fasteners are found on several other components on the Tiger One, specifically the bow hatches, which again I refer to in more detail in earlier videos. Now the roof has its welds at this point now added, as well as the air vent that I mentioned earlier. Now, if you'll notice, like I showcased before, there was a slight gap on this section over here, but now with the welds added, all traces of the gap are completely and utterly removed. The, weld, the sculpted welding also helps to remove the other gaps, which are left on the seam locations where the roof engages with the turret side. The only area, if you notice, that is absent of welds at this time is this little section over here. The reason why I didn't add the welds at this point is because once the drum cupola gets added, the welds need to be rearranged. Matter of fact, some of these welds here are going to have to be amputated in order to fit the cupola in place. Once the new cupola is added, I could then go ahead and re-sculpt the weld beads in the appropriate locations. Now, even though, again, the weld beads are made from epoxy, they do not inhibit the roof from being removed from the 
body in any way. Here I can just lift up and the plate just simply removes as I intended it earlier. And to mount it back on, just clicks directly back in place. Now that the turret sides are completed, the next area to focus on are the final turret detailings, which would include the loader's hatch, the commander's cupola, as well as the rear bustle bin. Once those details are added, the tank is basically ready to go into paint and completion, which of course more information on that is to come in the next video update. And with that, that wraps up this project update video for this 1.6 scale radio controlled early production German Tiger 1. If you like this video and aren't already a subscriber, be sure to subscribe to the ECA channel, which is the best way to keep in the loop of new posted content for project update videos like this guy over here, or the other smaller scale radio controlled and static builds that frequently get posted on the channel. Another way to stay in the loop of new posted content is by liking us on Facebook. There you'll see pictures of, and photographs of the ECA builds that have been posted in the past, as well as this particular build here from the project start all the way up to the condition that you see it in this video. Furthermore, don't forget to swing by eastcoastarmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thanks for watching.